Hey guys, it's Hannah Hearts Book 6, and today I'm coming to you makeupless to do my June wrap up for 2019. So, this month so far, I've read four books and one graphic novel, and today I'm going to be telling you about them. Also, I am glassesless as well because I broke my glasses. It was unfortunate and sad but we have to move on so anyway the first book that i read in the month of june is cherry cheesecake murder by joanne fluke and i'll be putting the book covers up here through editing which i finally learned how to do so i'm like up in my game but anyway so cherry cheesecake murder obviously follows hannah swenson she owns the her cookie shop the cookie jar runs it with her friend lisa and in this book, um, a famous director comes to town and is filming a movie and they're shooting a scene in the movie and this isn't a spoiler because it like happens in the very like, like in the prologue and basically there's a scene where this guy is supposed to commit suicide. He's supposed to take the gun, shoot himself in the head, but it's like obviously it's supposed to be a movie so it's fake. But the actor is not doing it very well. And so the director is like, okay, I'll do this. And so he does the scene, does it really well. And then he takes the gun, shoots, and the gun is actually loaded. The director dies. And Hannah Swenson has to figure out who killed him. Is it an accident? Who swapped out the prop gun for a real gun? And everything like that. It was good. But I gave the book three stars because it just, okay, so the murder happens in the prologue, but then you have to wait 18 chapters for the actual murder to happen in the timeline. And that's only two weeks during that time. I know that Joanne Fluke like loves her character development and character growth, and I love the characters and I love that so much, but I wished that we had a little bit more murder solving and a little bit less mundane life in Lake Eden. I love that stuff, but it was just frustrating to me because it happened way later in the book and I was just like, when is this murder even gonna happen? Like, I just want her to solve the mystery because part of the fun of reading cozy mysteries is trying to figure out the mystery. And when the books have the murders happen later on, you kind of lose interest a lot. So that book was three stars. The next book I read was Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. And I don't know if you guys have heard of this book. Actually, I know you have because it's so flippin' hype. It's about this girl named Kaya. She is the Marsh Girl. And everybody in her town knows her as the Marsh Girl. In the first couple chapters, you realize that her whole entire family has left her and she has to grow up by herself in this marsh. And she loves the marsh. So there's a timeline of Kaya growing up and then there's a timeline in 1968 I believe 1968-1969 when this boy named Chase and like he was like the quarterback of the football team like he's like really beloved and his parents are really rich or whatever and he ends up getting killed and the police believe that it's a homicide and not just an accident but the marsh has like basically sucked up all the evidence and people in the town suspect that it's Kaya and there's some connections that get weaved through. It's a coming of age story. It's a love story. Um, it's a multifaceted story and I gave it, I believe, I gave it four stars. It probably would be closer to four and a half, honestly. The reason I docked half a star to a star is because there was a lot of nature writing, which honestly makes sense because I found out um, during reading this book that Delia Owens actually is a nature writer. So that's her niche. So it makes sense that she's really good at it, but I tend to be a distracted reader. If I don't understand something that's happening in the book, I like it kind of pulls me out of the story and takes my interest away. And there was a point where I didn't think something was gonna, going to be solved. And I was like, well, 
I don't understand like how is nobody like upset about this in their Goodreads review and then the last like percent of it there was something that happened and I read it and as I was reading it, I didn't realize what was happening and then I got to this one line and I realized oh my god like it's all coming together and so it was like this really cool ending and honestly I finished it at like midnight or one in the morning and I was just like I could not stop thinking about it while I was trying to go to sleep I was like oh what if what like I was like rethinking the whole story after all of that so that was really exciting so four and a half stars it's really good and honestly I think it really lives up to the hype so that's really really good the next book that I read was Sprinkled Murder by Jim McKinley. This is the first book in a Cupcake Bakery mystery series, and I got it through Interlibrary Loan because my library is rude and does not have a series. It's basically about these two ladies who own the fairy tale cupcakes in like St Scottsdale, Arizona, and their names are Mel, Melanie Cooper, and Angie Delora. And Angie Delora is a former teacher. She has like seven brothers, and they're kind of crazy. And then Mel has a mom who's been widowed and they also have a best friend Tate who invested in their cupcake business. And so Mel and Angie are working at the cupcake shop in the beginning of the book and Tate comes in and is announcing that he's gotten engaged to this really prominent fashion designer named Christy Stevens and she wants Mel to make the cupcakes. And so Mel meets with her and Christy has really high expectations and she wants Mel to sign over the rights to her cupcake. So she wants five brand new, never been um, seen before cupcakes, but she wants to own the rights to them. And Mel wants to tell Tate, but she also doesn't want to upset him because she's been friends with him for a long time and she just wants him to be happy. Mel makes the cupcakes, gives it to her two assistants and then in the next like Saturday she's supposed to come to Christie's fashion design place and check out the cupcakes but when she gets there she doesn't answer the door and Mel lets herself in through the back door because it's unlocked and we find out that Christy Stevens is dead on the floor and the last thing she ate was one of Mel's cupcakes so immediately the detectives suspect that Mel is the murderer and Mel has to take it into her own hands to figure out who solved the murder. This book was really good. The ending was really surprising to me. And so that was honestly like the best part of it. And also the characters are really, really fun. Mel and Angie have like a good like quip back and forth. They also speak in movie quotes a lot, like old movies, because Mel, Angie, and Tate all like old movies and they always try to stump each other with these quotes and so it's really fun especially if you're like an old movie buff like this book series would be really great for you and I just really liked it because again my complaint with Cherry Cheesecake Murder um was fixed in this book and the murder happens pretty early on and it really sucks you in and really makes you think about who the murderer is and I did predict who the murderer was, but there was a twist that went along with it that I wasn't expecting and I really liked. So that was good. And that was just a solid four stars. The next book that I read is It's the Babysitter's Club Graphics Number 2 by Raina Tal Talgemeyer, The Truth About Stacy. And I really liked this graphic novel. I think I would give it three to three and a half stars. It's a really good graphic novel series. They're really cute. I've never really read the uh, regular BSC chapter books but I'm actually doing a project with that and that's one of my gonna be one of my videos so sneak peek but anyway I just really like the characters I love the BSC movie that came out in like 1995 it's older than I am but it doesn't matter but anyway it's a really cute movie and I think that you know Stacy's a really good character I like that she has diabetes and honestly if you think about it that was like pretty diverse for like the 90s so it's really cool to have like that diversity that happens because obviously 
it's a series from the 90s that they brought into the um, early, you know, like late 2000s. I don't said early 2000s. We're not in the early 2000s anymore. Thank God. High rise jeans are in, low rise jeans are out. It's just a uh, fun to like revamp a series that was beloved by so many young girls and especially because series that are populated by teenage girls they usually get a bad rap but the babysitters club is just so beloved and it's so fun to read those books and they're just so quick and they just are so simple and i love the storylines so not much to say about those but i really like them the last book that i read is Emmy and Oliver by Robin Benway and I gave that book a solid four and a half stars. Emmy and Oliver is the second book that I've read by Robin Benway. Robin Benway is the author of Far From the Tree which is a National Book Award winner and this book is about Emmy and Oliver who were both born on July 7th which is actually fun fact my anniversary is next Sunday as the time I'm filming this and they're best friends they grew up right next door to each other and Oliver one day in second grade gets kidnapped by his father and the beginning of the story is Emmy telling the story of how Oliver was kidnapped and how the whole town was pretty much shaken by this event and how her parents are now super over protective of her because her best friend just disappeared and bent into thin air and they've been looking for him for 10 years and Oliver comes back and he has to deal with the fact that his father has kidnapped him and his mother has some animosity towards his father of course and um, Oliver has to come to terms with his new life and um, he just has to deal with the repercussions of his father's actions and it was just a really wonderfully well done book um the ending I loved because it really showed um the love that one of the characters has for another I can't really say it without giving it away but anyway um I just think Emmy and Oliver had a wonderful friendship it does turn into a romance so if you don't like romances this probably won't be the book for you but I just thought it was a wonderful friendship and they had really good conversations about um what Oliver went through and I love that Emmy was such a good listener and that they were just honestly really wise but also I really liked that um the conversations were really like typical of high schoolers because I know a lot of people a lot of older people try to write um teen characters and they end up sounding like really inauthentic but these characters sounded really authentic and I loved the way that they talked to each other she has two other best friends Caro and Drew and all four of them were friends um when they were in second grade and um the dialogue between Caro, Drew and Emmy was just wonderful and I loved Emmy's relationships with her parents. She had some sarcastic, like, witty quips with them. And I really liked that. So, honestly, really loved that book. Um, I think Far From the Tree still is my favorite by Robin Benway, but it's okay. And I just thought it was such a sweet story. So, that, those were all the books that I read in June. It is now really dark in here. So, I'm going to end this video now. And I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to stick around and see what I read in July. Comment down below what was the your favorite book that you read in June or a favorite graphic novel or what was your favorite thing you did in June if you were in a reading slump because I know reading slumps all too well and it's okay if you didn't read because honestly reading is supposed to be fun and if you're not into it don't do it. So yeah hope you guys enjoy your weekend and your reads. Bye!